Hello YouTube, hello friends, welcome to another video of mine. If you are new here, my name is Lexi. If you are not new here, thank you for rejoining. I will put my Instagram up above so we can connect there. Well, welcome to a video, you guys. So I don't know if you can tell, I don't think you really can in this lighting, but I am so burnt. So I spent yesterday just like two hours at the beach, which I never do, but I had a really nice little relaxing day with my mom and my sister. We went to yoga in the morning and then we went to the beach and I am just like known to have like really sensitive skin. So regardless how much sunscreen I put on, and even though I was in the shade like the half half the time we were there, I am burnt. Like I look like a lobster on my face. So actually the next clip you see, you may kind of notice I look a little sunburned, but welcome to this video. I wanted to First off, just welcome you guys and intro this video. Um, got a lot of exciting stuff in this video for you guys. So the next clip you're gonna see, I'm gonna show you guys a really cool little recipe. You guys are always wanting to see some, just some easy like recipes, especially sweet tooth recipes. So I'm gonna show you guys a quick little recipe um, in the next clip. Um, please do note too, I'll put all of the ingredients um, below, but I also made this recipe and I was thinking to myself afterwards, if you want it to be a little bit more cakier, so I'm gonna show you guys a mug cake cake, um, you can add a tablespoon of coconut flour or almond flour if you want it to be a little cakier. Um, you don't have to, as you'll see, I did it just fine without it. But if you want it to be a little cakier, that is a little, little substitute you could add in. But enjoy the recipe and I will catch you guys in a bit. Okay guys, so as promised, I'm gonna show you a really quick little high protein mug cake that I'm gonna whip up really quick. So what you're gonna need for this, and again, I'll, like I did in my last recipe video, I'm gonna put all the measurements down below along with the macros, but you need a scoop of protein powder. Highly recommend PE Science. You can use code LexiMate for a discount, but I also want to say this protein bakes really well. So I cannot promise that if you use like a different protein that this is going to turn out the same, but PE Science is the best in my opinion. So I'm going to use a scoop of protein powder. Um, you're going to need a whole egg. You're going to need some baking powder and I have some sprinkles because I'm using cake pot protein. So it kind of fits the theme, um, but totally optional. And then again, this is an optional little mix in, um, but I have some blueberries because I'm going to add some blueberries in it. Um, you don't have to add blueberries. You could also add chocolate chips or just nothing in the middle. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how to put this together and you'll obviously you'll need a mug too. I have a mug that I'm going to put this in because I'm going to microwave it to make it. So stay tuned and I'm going to show you guys kind of how I assemble this. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I add my scoop of protein and then I'm gonna use one whole egg. And then last but not least, baking powder. So I'm honestly not gonna measure this. I'm just gonna put like a little bit, a little, little pinch in there. And then um, I'm gonna add a little bit of water too. So I'm gonna add that water and then I'm gonna mix it up. So that way it's not as dry. Obviously the egg gives a little bit of liquid, but I'm gonna add maybe like two tablespoons of water and then mix it up. So this is what it looks like. I added about two tablespoons of water. So as you can tell, it's just very like cakey. It's essentially like cake mix. Um, so now I am not gonna measure the sprinkles, but I'm just gonna put a little bit in there. And then I'm gonna add some blueberries as well. Again, totally optional, but I recommend it. All right, you guys, so now I have my mug and what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna end up actually pouring out this mug cake, like transferring it out of the mug, which you don't have to do, but I'm gonna put a little bit of baking spray in it. That way it comes out pretty, pretty easily. Um, but I'm just gonna put the batter in here and then I'm gonna throw it into the microwave. It's All right, you guys, so I just put this in the microwave for a minute total. I did two increments of 30 seconds. I checked on it after the first increment, um, and then I finished off the minute, and it is perfect. So I'm going to, you guys can kind of see it, but I'm going to actually put pour it out onto um, a plate and then just dig into it that way. All right, you guys, so I transferred it onto a plate, and as you can see, all the blueberries and sprinkles kind of fell to the bottom, but this is what we are working with. So obviously, it looks kind of kind of cakey but this is the madness that happened after literally what we used like four ingredients um maybe five if you count the sprinkles um and i'll put the macros below but the macros are really good for this so since i put a whole scoop of protein and a whole egg it has like over 25 grams of protein in this in this little little cake right here so yeah it's actually pretty cakey and good 
Okay, you guys, so I wanted to take a point in this video to show you guys and talk a little bit about how I meal prep and some of my tips for meal prepping. So I put a little question box up on my Instagram um, like last week asking you guys what you want to see on YouTube. And I actually got a few people that really wanted to see like how to effectively meal prep for the week. So um, even if you already meal prep, some of these like what I'm telling you I do may help you out a little bit, but especially if you're a beginner and you just don't know where to start, I think this will be really helpful. So what what I have is I have a little notebook here. So um, what I like to do, so, you know, let's say it is a Saturday or Sunday. I know a lot of people do their bulk grocery shopping on the weekends because, you know, that's when we usually have the most time. Um, so what I like to do is I always like to make a list because I am 10 times less stressed if I write things down. If I have it all jumbled on in my brain, I feel like that just feeds into my stress. So I like to write it down. Now, furthermore, what I have here on this notebook is I've broken it down down into protein sources, carb sources, fat sources, and then I have a little section that says miscellaneous. So essentially, I'm writing down my grocery list, but I'm breaking it down by each macronutrient to make sure that I go to the store and I get, you know, things that like I get things that cover all of my macro needs, right? Um, that way, what I can then do is I can get all that stuff and I can piece it together and, you know, throw a protein source, throw a carb source, throw a fat source into a Tupperware and make that a meal, right? Because I would deem a balanced meal something with absolutely having protein, a little bit of carbs and a little bit of fat. I think that that's a very balanced meal when you can have a good ratio of all three. So for example, like I'll just read off some of the stuff that, um, some of the things that are my staples. So under protein, I have, eggs. I have tuna packets. Um, I have cottage cheese. I've been really loving cottage cheese recently. I have Greek yogurt and then I have chicken. And then under carbs, I have oatmeal, bananas, sweet potato, and rice cake. So those will be like my main carbs for the week. Um, aside from veggies where, you know, veggies I'll get trace carbs from, but I wouldn't really count veggies as like a carb source. And then for my fats um, to make sure that I get and stock up on, I have peanut butter. Um, I'm going to use the yolks from the eggs and then almonds. Um, and then I have a few things under my like little miscellaneous section. Usually I'll use that section for like seasonings or condiments or, you know, just random stuff. So I actually put some of my veggies under here. So I put spinach, frozen veggies, sea salt, and mustard. Um, so that's under my miscellaneous stuff. So then what I can do from there is I've made my grocery list. I've made sure that, okay, I'm going to go and make sure I have protein, carbs, and fat for the week stocked in my fridge and my pantry. And then what I can do from there, what I like to do, and I generally recommend what people, what I generally recommend my clients do is try to kind of create a meal plan for yourself for the week. So, you know, if you want to eat the same thing every day throughout the week, awesome. Um, don't feel like you have to, but I would say at least have some consistency throughout your week. Um, so like what I recommend people do is, you know, create one breakfast that you're just going to stick with for up throughout the week. Um, what I like to do is I like to stick with like a very similar breakfast and lunch all throughout the week, meal prep those ahead of time, and then I'll change up my dinner a little bit every night, so to say. So I have a little bit of variance throughout the week. So for example, I can take my grocery list and based off of, you know, kind of what's on my grocery list for breakfast, I'm going to plan out some oats with Greek yogurt, um, a little bit of protein powder, and a tablespoon of nut butter. Um, so those are all ingredients that were on my grocery list, despite the protein, I already have that in my, um, in my pantry, but the oats, the Greek yogurt, and then the nut butter. So, you know, that's going to be like a little over an overnight oat concoction. Um, and then for lunch, I have like chicken, sweet potato, and Brussels sprouts. So, um, you know, I can take those ingredients that I'm getting at the grocery store, pick one of the protein sources, pick one of the carb sources, pick one of the fat sources, and kind of piece them together in a meal. So that's kind of how I wanted to share like how I do my meal prep personally. Um, I'm a big list person, so I do really like to write it down, and I strongly suggest taking a Saturday or a Sunday or just a day that you have a little bit of extra time like right before you go to the grocery store and break it down into okay what am I gonna get what's a protein source what's a carb source what's a fat source like break it down that way and then you know miscellaneous of course that way you go to the store and then you don't get home and you're like oh crap like I you know didn't get any fat sources or whatnot so I find that that makes it easiest for me so I wanted to share that little tidbit of information for you guys um, if you have any meal prep like hacks or whatever comment below. I'd love to hear those, but I hope, hope that little approach was helpful for you guys. 
So I'm back and I'm gonna show you guys something that I think is going to blow your guys' mind. Um, I want to show you guys this because I posted it on my Instagram and I got so many people that were like, oh my gosh, look, what, where'd you get that? So I was perusing the aisles of Publix the other day and you guys know how much I love Chobani Zero Sugar Greek Yogurt and it's mainly because it's so good and the macros are so good. Like it is very low carb, high in protein, zero fat. And most Greek yogurts are, you know, they have protein, but they also have a lot of added carbs and fat and whatnot, which is fine. But if you just want a Greek yogurt that's lower carb and just essentially just protein, this is an awesome brand. But I was perusing the aisles of Publix like a few days ago and this flavor jumped out at me and it is pumpkin spice. So I know some people out there are pumpkin spice haters and they think it's too early for pumpkin stuff, um, which like granted, yes, it is July. I'm not trying to get into like the fall vibes here or anything. However, I don't really think of like pumpkin spice, like flavoring for food, um, like especially for yogurt. I don't really think of it as like a seasonal thing. Like I'll enjoy it year round. I'll be honest. I, I, I'll enjoy pumpkin year round to be honest. Um, but I found this at Publix. Um, so I am excited to try it, but I wanted to show you guys that this flavor does exist um yeah Publix carries this brand of yogurt and I've actually noticed that some Walmarts do as well so if you're somebody who doesn't have a Publix around you um Walmart has started to carry this brand as well um and then I also have seen it at Sprouts if you have a Sprouts near you so wanted to show you guys that little find because I posted it on Instagram and people were like oh my gosh so and that is something I was super excited to find but I'm going to show you guys a little meal prep tip in the next clip Hi friends, so I'm gonna show you guys a little meal prep hack. So I just talked about, um, well, a few clips ago, talked about um, some of like how I how I um, organize my meal prep, but I wanted to give you guys a little hack because I actually had a team Zoom call last night with some of my clients and um, one, we were talking about meal prep strategies and one of my clients was like, I really struggle with meal prepping veggies. Like, and, I, and I'm like, oh, that totally makes sense because if you think about it, a lot of times like meal prepping veggies doesn't sound super appealing. You don't want things to be soggy, etc. So I'm gonna show you guys a tip. And um, well, this is exactly what I do when I prepare my veggies. And some of you guys may already know this, but I go to Walmart and I get the frozen veggie packs, which is the great value brand. I mean, you can get any, it doesn't have to be great value, but I go to Walmart, I get these, they're super cheap. Um, and what I do is I get like Brussels sprouts and I also really love these like little carrot slices. Um, I also love getting the French cut green beans and I will literally throw them straight from the freezer into the air fryer. And I swear to God, they taste so good. I air fry them until they're a little crispy, a little golden brown, then I season them and it is so delicious. And it's so easy because you're essentially just taking it out of the freezer, putting it into the air fryer. You don't have to saute them. You don't have to do really any like physical cooking. Um, so it's really nice. And this is something that you could do and put into your meal prep meals as well. Um, and like, they're probably not gonna go soggy or, or gross, so to say. And my mom the other day was like, ew, like, why do you eat frozen veggies? Aren't they so soggy? And I'm like, no, you have to air fry them. Like if you air fry them, they are so, so good. So I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna air fry some Brussels and some carrot coins. Um, and then I will show you guys what they look like afterwards. Okay, verdict is in, and I know I've like changed since I last tell you guys all I put on this flannel, but I digress. So what I ended up doing is I put in the carrots and I put in the Brussels sprouts into my air fryer at 350 for about 15 minutes. Now, it, you could leave them in there for longer if you want them to be like a little bit more shriveled up, but I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. Um, so you can kind of see this little bowl. Um, you can kind of tell like the Brussels sprouts are a little browned. The carrot coins, oh, they're so good. And when you let them warm, it's like, I don't know how to describe it. They're like a little crispy on the outside and then like gooey on the inside. Well, not gooey, that's not the right word. Soft, soft on the inside, that's the word. Um, and that is my favorite way to prepare my vegetables. So that is a meal prep tip um, and kind of inspired by a client question, like I said, that I got last night on my client team um, Zoom call was just like, how do you prep veggies and not let them get soggy and gross? So you could easily air fry veggies like this and leave them in the fridge for a couple days and they're fine. So typically I'll air Air fry them plain straight out of the freezer like you guys just saw and then I'll just air fry them and season them to my to my preference so that is a little hack for you um but I'm gonna wrap up this video here so I kind of condensed 
a little bit of everything into one video, um, a recipe. So if you try that mug cake recipe, let me know. Um, tag me in the finished product if you do it. Um, like I said early on in the video, in that recipe, if you want it to be a little bit more cakier, add a tablespoon of like coconut or almond flour. Um, but you don't have to do that. Like you can, you, like you were able to tell, I was able to do the recipe without that, and it turned out a okay. Um, and then also, I wanted to combine some meal prep tips in this video. So hopefully, you guys learned a lot. That's always what I, I want to bring forth in my video is to make them, or in my videos is to make them um, like entertaining and personable, but also for you guys to walk away like learning something or just to take away something. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. Um, subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Um, connect with me on Instagram. I'll put my Instagram up, up, up above and wherever you guys are at in the world. I hope you have a great rest of your day.